I mean, Let me bring in Leesman right here, because since we're talking about surveys and, you know, what, what is an obviously more pessimistic view of kind of where, where we are, your All-America Economic Survey reflects that wholeheartedly. Yeah, I don't have any good news in this survey here. I look for it all the time. Uh, but what we have is we have the cross, if you look at it. What we've had is a pretty buoyant last several years. We had those who were optimistic now and for the future had been running ahead. And it was just this time last year, I was running out of good things to say. If you look at that 4830 in the middle of your screen, that's people who are optimistic about the economy now and for the future versus pessimistic now and for the future. I was running out of good things to say. Scott, now we've got this cross where it's now had this steady rise up and then a sharp rise up in that red line this last time, this last quarter. Uh, and, and it really permeates all sorts of things that are out there, people's view on their wages, uh, people's view on the president when it comes to the economy, uh, all, 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 people's view on the stock market is negative as well, Scott. So th these are things that, that I think, if you're wondering, can the consumer roll over? I don't think it's for sure he and she does, but um, uh, I think it's a possibility here. Uh, the only good thing is the assessment of the current economy is not too bad. It's only down about a point. So people are really sort of concerned about where things are going, and there's a lot of reasons out the there. The danger of that, of course, is that it can feed on itself, and it can sure. become a negative psychological feedback loop. And I'm not suggesting it's a fait accompli and we just have to watch it happen. Things can turn. And by the way, an actual detente on trade right. uh, with Beijing could do the trick. Now, Josh, this you is, could see those a, numbers go there's up. There's a wall up I want to show you, which is interesting, that only about a third see a recession coming, which is different from... The CFOs, the CFOs may know better and may be more determinative of what happens, but the consumer has a say as well. Yes. And what's interesting about this number here is it ticks above 50 when we're at or near a recession. So we're not quite there yet, or the, the, the fear is not overwhelming but, but right always, now. There's always a path to it, right? So everybody's oh, yeah. at it one oh, yeah. time and say, I see a recession. Right. So the numbers that you're citing, I don't know where those sentiment numbers were prior to the last recession at this point in time, how much it presaged recession. But here's what I'd say. As far as buybacks, it's one of the reasons why I think we're going to have a poor earnings season, a disappointing earnings season, which is another reason for my negative bias, right? Because you buy back stocks, it's accretive to earnings. If I'm a CEO, and I've spoken to some CEOs, I'm sitting there, and although I haven't had this conversation, but if I'm a CEO and I believe that we're getting close to recession, I'm not going to buy back stock. I'm going to wait to valuations get crushed in companies and buy some more growth. Those tucking acquisitions, those those you know those changing, defining acquisitions. That's what I would do. I want to keep a war chest, okay? Because I won't generate. Let me pose cash. this. Let me pose this question. It, it, Josh sort of alluded to it in in the conversation that he was having, or reflecting on the conversation mm -hmm. he was having yesterday, and that is whether the Fed can do anything about the slowdown that you're seeing. That maybe why you have a more pessimistic view on on where we may be heading. Is there real doubt as to whether the Fed can do anything, or if it's all laying <clears throat> at the foot, uh, I mean, so to speak, it, of it, the president and trade? Nobody at this table knows anything more or less than the Fed does about how to price in the trade war. I, I just don't think anybody does. The Fed has said repeatedly, "We're in new ground here." Um, my take on all this is we would have had a slowdown, but we wouldn't be sitting here with these fears of recession. We had a slowdown from the the, uh, uh, the sugar high of the tax cut in 18, which spurred the buybacks and spurred other stuff. But we wouldn't be sitting here with so much doubt about the future mm. in the absence of a trade war. Did the market come off the low and reverse as the probability <clears throat> of an October rate cut I, 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 increased? I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, just, I didn't time saying, it down to that check, you to look but at let me chart, show people. Saying, we're now 90% yeah, Let me October. show people what's happened here, which is that we are now at a uh, 87, well, 90, we were 90 earlier, now we're 87. What's more interesting is this second cut being priced in this year, 57% yeah. probability, uh, if you're listening on the radio right now, of a second cut coming in December which I believe would be the fourth one this year, which would entirely reverse the rate hikes of what last year. What exactly would that accomplish? Look at 3M. This is a Dow component, arguably I one of the most important on the, industrials. Yeah, 3M's on the list of okay. the new 50 the stock is down. Today. The stock is down 40% from its high. Explain to me, all the, think of all the things they sell to the industrial economy, right? Like gigantic things, little Much things. Commodity goods. Right, yeah. fine. But explain to me why people start buying more things from 3M if we take... Uh, Fed funds from 1.75 to 1.5. You know the answer. What, what on earth? What on earth 
does that accomplish other than stopping the tweets from coming in? October 29th Nothing. and October 30th is the date of the FOMC meeting. You know the answer to this. Let's say they give you a 50 basis point cut and they say they're going to come in and they're going to provide liquidity to the marketplace. We'll have a nice stock market rally. Exactly. Agreed. Consumer spending is right now coming into the most critical historical quarter. Spending initially begins in the first week of November through the end of the year right. if the consumer feels comfortable. If you've got an S&P 500 sitting around 2900 2950 that consumer is out there. They're active. They're spending their money. If the S&P falls back to 2700 hands go in the pocket. Consumer spending at the worst possible time. You just time said 50 basis weakens. points, though. There are people on the Fed today. I think it was, who is it, Evans today was saying he's not convinced you need another one? I don't know. Someone said. Yeah, Evans was a little on the, was on the fence. He, he, it sounds like he could go if the data weakened more, and I think this ISM services is something that's going to get the attention of Fed officials. Well, I think they, they'll see but this. But they did 25 bips as an insurance policy, right? That was so the first they had, one. That's first. been a month. That's not even a month ago, right? So do you think they're all going to go to 50 with the wide point. divergence of uh, views on the I on think the you bed? said it earlier, Weiss. We'll see tomorrow. Right, I mean that 8:30 number is going to be determinative. It's going to be the thing that well, tells us. 50. But the bigger question is, if we go to recession, what's in the toolbox? I'm with Josh. I think that what we're seeing now right, you're give it is away good now? headlines. Right, it is good for headlines, but 175 to 150 credits never been an issue during this cycle. The, it just hasn't. The been.